My name is Rebecca. And I'm Kimberly. On Labor Day weekend, we launched our homemade balloon craft called the Loki Lego Launcher up to the stratosphere. Our video was covered by GeekWire, and as a result, we were lucky enough to be able to talk to several organizations, including Blue Origin, Vulcan Aerospace, Johns Hopkins Advanced Physics Lab, and the University of Washington's Computer Science and Engineering Department. Also, Mr. David Seal from NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory wrote us an inspirational letter and invited us for a visit to their campus in Pasadena, California. So, our family went down for a visit. Mr. Seal, Supervisor for Mission Engineering and Planning at JPL, was our awesome tour guide for the day. We went to the Mars Yard, where we met Megan Richardson, who showed us the Curiosity Test Rover. Megan is super cool, and she runs the Mars Yard. She explained a whole bunch of stuff to us about Curiosity. We were surprised how light the wheels on Curiosity are. They also have a pattern that spells out JPL in Morse code when it makes tracks on the surface of Mars. We also met Mr. Bobak Ferdowsi, who many people know as Mohawk Guy. He acquired internet fame during the Curiosity rover landing video because of his Mohawk. He was really nice to us. We saw a few different models of Curiosity with different weights and materials to imitate the gravity on Mars. There are 10 science instruments and 17 cameras on Curiosity. It was so cool to see them up close. After the Mars Yard, we went to the Aerobot Lab, where we met a bunch of people including Dr. Pockin, Jeffrey Hall, and Sarah Suska. That was really neat because we learned all about the balloons that they were using for planetary exploration. Some of the places they are designing balloons for include Venus, Mars, and Titan. We also learned about a balloon project that they worked on that was going to study dark matter by sending a telescope up to space. There were a few people from the NASA Education and Outreach Department who showed us a fun activity. We arranged different payloads and had to adjust the weight to account for, different, for the lift of each balloon, similar to what we did on our own mission. After lunch at the JPL cafeteria, we saw an engineer taking her rover for a walk. Apparently, that's just another day at JPL. We also met Dr. Diane Evans, JPL Director for Earth Science and Technology. We had fun showing our data to her from our Loki Lego launcher. We had a really cool treat when Mr. Ferdowsi met us again at the Space Flight Operations Facility. This place was super cool because you could see all the missions that were going on and all the spacecraft that were sending and receiving data. We were so excited to go into the mission control room, aka the dark room, because this is the room we saw when we watched all the JPL engineers doing the Curiosity landing. We even pretended to be engineers for a little bit. It's funny because here you can see two Mr. Fredowsies, the real guy and the cardboard guy in the corner. The cardboard guy is holding Lucky Peanuts. On every mission, they have to have a jar of peanuts, because on some missions that didn't have peanuts, they didn't work out so well. He also s showed us some procedures from a real-life mission. There were so many numbers and steps in each procedure. After that, we went over to the high bay, which is a super big building. It is what they call a clean room, which means that we couldn't bring any contamination from the outside. Mr. Ban Tu showed us how to get into bunny suits. They didn't really have any that were our size, but we made it work. We also put on hair nets, gloves, and booties. Then we took an air shower, which was a lot of fun. You go in one door and then the air jets blow off any dust off you, and then you go through the other door. It's important that we don't get any contaminants in the clean room. The high bay is a huge room that is tall not only up, but also down. It goes down four stories to create all the airflow that they need. In the high bay, they assemble the rovers and the space vehicles before they are launched. We got to see the next generation Mars entry vehicle called the Low Density Supersonic Decelerator, or the LDSD. NASA JPL uses a lot of acronyms. The LDSD uses two components to slow down. It has a tube around it that is inflated basically like a bunch of car airbags, and it also has a supersonic parachute. Our parachute is a lot smaller compared to theirs. 
we also saw several of the components that were recovered from their second test flight. We are really grateful for the special visit we had to NASA JPL. We learned so much there and met some really neat people. We learned that NASA JPL are not just studying the stars and their other planets, but they're using their resources to study the Earth as well. There's still so much to learn about our own planet and lots of data to co collect. The NASA education team has a lot of resources available to help kids like us learn more about the world. There's a fun difference between scientists and engineers, but we can see why learning science and technology and engineering and math is super fun. We want to thank everyone at NASA JPL for making our visit so awesome. And special thanks to David Seal, who made the whole thing happen. We hope to visit again soon. Thanks, thanks for watching. Bye.